Let's get to work. It's all dark and horny at 12 o'clock. Welcome back to the channel YouTube. Let me talk to you. So I just finished watching Ghostbusters Frozen Empire and I have to say that this film definitely has some problems. Looking at the review scores for Rotten Tomatoes, I find myself being a bit conflicted right now. I'm sitting somewhere in the middle. Now, I don't necessarily agree with the critic score as a whole, and I would have never thought that I would say this, but I kinda somewhat do agree with it slightly. I also necessarily don't disagree with the 86 score that the audience has given this film, which is why I find myself sitting somewhere in the middle and why I find myself so, so conflicted. Now, the film sits about a mid-level C plus or C minus for me, but I don't know. I'm probably gonna see it again and give it a second opinion, but one would ask what went wrong with this film? Ghostbusters Afterlife was such a good film and a really good sequel to an iconic franchise from the past. So what really happened with this story? How did we go from an endearing teenage coming of age story to a film that is full of character bloat, terrible pacing, and a regression in character growth and a trivial, predictable story? So with all that bollocks and all this nonsense out of the way with the intro, let's get into the review. The number one complaint that I have about this film is the pacing. The film itself is only an hour and 55 minutes long, and we don't get to the namesake of the title of this film, The Frozen Empire, until we're at an hour and 22 minutes into this film. That left them with 33 minutes to wrap this story up, and I have to say that in the end, they really dropped the ball on this one for me. That's just my opinion. You might feel differently, but for me, they really dropped the ball. Now, going into this film, I was slightly excited because of the success of Ghostbusters Afterlife. I had high hopes for what Gil Kennan and Iron Reitman had in store for us with their follow-up to their first film. Within 30 minutes of this film, sitting in the theater, I already knew that this was going to be different. The film already felt different. Within that short period of time, I noticed a lot of things that I knew that were going to bug the hell out of me. Phoebe as a character, for one, had the worst character regression in the film overall, compared to her character in the first one, which was a character that I actually liked. I actually thought was endearing, was charming, smart, and she had something about her that made the audience care. Whereas in the second one, it just feels like a total opposite for her character. She's still smart, but now she just feels cocky and she comes off as uh, an extreme know-it-all. She was annoying, cocky, and defiant at every single turn. And not to mention, her character is only 15 years old. And the nonsense that she gets herself into, to me, was highly unacceptable and unlikely to happen in any normal setting. The fact that the parents in general did nothing to kind of check her behavior was quite annoying. And I found myself over and over again, yelling at the screen, like you're only 15, you're only 15, go sit down somewhere, you can't do this. But yet again, the story kept pushing her character into this defiant direction and continued to add to her know-it-all attitude. Now, let's talk about the added cast. The cast from the original film, in my opinion, felt shoehorned in. They didn't really fit into the story as well as they did an afterlife. Nothing about these characters felt woven into the story. But I'm also not really going to say that it wasn't exciting just to see these guys back on the screen together again. Like anybody that grew up watching these films, it was enjoyable. But they just didn't fit the story. Making them a cameo at the end and making Egon the focal point for the story in Afterlife, this worked really, really well. But in this one, they just felt out of place. Overall, I just wasn't impressed. And the addition of Kamal and Johnny's character, Nadine, it came across lukewarm at best for me. His character, in my opinion, added really nothing to the story. And it just felt like he was a plot device in an already bloated cast, in an already predictable story. 
all the characters, in my opinion, had less character growth in this film because they decided to bring back almost the entirety of the original cast, which led to the dreaded, unneeded character bloat. The film suffers from poor pacing, uninspired story, annoying characters, and a predictable plot. Every single thing that I thought that was gonna happen throughout the sitting of this film happened every single time. Thus taking away that, one would say, sense of wonder and excitement for what comes next for me. Now, I'm not gonna say I was disappointed, but slightly let down with the story compared to how good Afterlife was. So I'm sure we're probably gonna get another one in this franchise because at the current moment, the film has made around $16 million and that's pretty much close to what Afterlife made on its opening day. So the film probably will continue to grow and come close, if not past that $204 million worldwide box office that Afterlife had when it was released. But in the end, that remains to be seen. People who see this film through word of mouth, through advertising, may be slightly disappointed. But for now, the film sits around a seven out of 10 for me. So with all that said, my name's Lincoln. This has been an RPG show. If you've seen this film, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Until next time, guys, like, comment, sub, and I'm out. Peace.